Remember 15 years ago when everyone and their grandma was caught up in the Wii Sports craze? Nintendo Switch Sports tries to recapture that lightning in a bottle moment with a tighter but all too familiar experience. It refines the same concept of simple, family-friendly motion-controlled games and applies it to a limited selection of new and old sports. Just like Wii Sports before it, Nintendo Switch Sports is best played as a fun but shallow party game that you can break out for friends and family in a pinch, though this time it's not quite the novelty it was back in 2006. There aren't as many games in Switch Sports as there were in Wii Sports Resort, which had 12, but the six that are here are higher quality on average. There's fun to be had in playing a quick tennis match against some NPCs or bowling a few frames alone, but that's not the point. Switch Sports is undeniably at its best when you're playing in the same room with other people, waving your arms and legs around like maniacs. Once I played a few rounds with my parents, and then a group of friends, the magic of Wii Sports came back in force. It's fun to watch the difference between how gamers and non-gamers play. I stood relatively still while playing a match of badminton, making the bare minimum motions with the Joy-Con necessary to trigger on-screen movements. My mom, though? She lunged across the room to return a shot, threw her shoulder into each smash, and ultimately ended up winded because she wasn't playing Switch Sports like a video game, she was playing it like the real thing. Similarly, when bowling, both my parents tended to walk up to the screen every time they threw the ball, because the simplicity of it made those movements feel all the more natural to them, like they were bowling around in real life. But to really test out Switch Sports in its natural environment, you need a party. So I got together with a group of 12 friends and let them all have at it. Beyond some of the routine headaches with connecting all the Joy-Con correctly, getting my friends up and at it was a breeze. Every single game in the collection is immediately more fun in this setting. Chambara becomes a series of wild flails while onlookers cheer on, badminton emerges as an intense back and forth where neither player is willing to accept defeat, and soccer turns into a mad sprint to the ball to try and get some last second diving headers in before the clock hits zero. And even though it's limited to just a few tracks, Switch Sports has some bops for menu music that gave this fan of the original a solid rush of nostalgia. On more than one occasion, I simply let the tracks play out before moving on to another sport. Some of Switch Sports' games fare better than others when it comes to the intuitiveness of the controls. Specifically, volleyball is the most difficult to simply pick up and play. During any given match, you'll be automatically shuffled through all the different positions, from server to setter to blocker. Your success is almost entirely based on cooperation with your teammate, because well-timed sets, jumps, and spikes compound into stronger, harder to return shots. Compare that to badminton, which is easily my favorite sport of the bunch. It offers the most control, rewarding underhand returns, smashes, birdie placement, and more fine-tuned executions. You can even hold the trigger to initiate a drop shot, forcing your opponent to rush the net so you can then satisfyingly smash the birdie to the opposite corner of the court. It's limited to two players at a time, which feels like a big missed opportunity, but the often heated returns feel much more intense for it. Bowling also gives you a high degree of control over the ball, to the point where I was quickly bowling 150 point games without breaking a sweat. But the real challenge is in the special mode, which throws increasingly difficult obstacles in the path of your strike, and will give even the best Wii bowlers a run for their money. It also gives you and up to three friends the option to play simultaneously. That's great, because everyone doesn't have to sit around and wait for everybody else to finish the frame. The result is, yeah, a little chaotic, but fittingly fun. Soccer is the most disappointing. It plays like a slower, less flashy version of Rocket League. The problem, though, is that you spend most of the time in a match slowly running across the field. One-on-one -on -one is generally more enjoyable simply by virtue of the field being smaller, but four-on-four -four is a drag because it takes forever thanks to the ball constantly trading possession. Soccer also only allows for up to two human players at a time, preventing it from being redeemed as a fun party game. The simple soccer shootout minigame that requires a physical leg strap just boils down to a basic timing exercise. If you're worried about losing out on value because you decided to download Switch Sports instead of picking it up physically and paying an extra $10, don't. For intensity, nothing in this lineup matches Chambra's sword fighting battles. Both fighters enter a sort of stilted dance, where one blocks while the other attempts to pull off parallel slashes to cut through their defenses. If you've chosen to use the charge sword, more successful blocks result in a powerful and satisfying return strike, while twin sword wielders can swing their weapons in unison to execute a Zelda-like spin attack that makes their generally more awkward handling worth it. Though the motion controls don't always feel perfectly accurate, the matches can result in memorable come-from-behind moments, where you go from being on the defensive to moving in for the kill, so to speak. 
Yeah, the loser just comically falls into a pool of water. This is Nintendo, after all. Finally, Switch Sports' version of tennis is almost exactly like it was in Wii Sports, and you can only play doubles with other players or against NPCs, which differentiates it from the 1v1 matches of badminton. It feels far more timing-oriented than badminton, but it does give you the ability to slice and lob based on how you hit the ball. Those differences make it better for bigger parties, but it feels shallow by comparison. So that all sounds like a lot of fun, but here's the thing. It's unlikely to take you and your friends more than an hour or two to play through everything Switch Sports has to offer. But that simplicity is what makes it work so well as a party starter. Its selection of six sports doesn't have a lot of staying power, and the lack of golf at launch is sorely missed. The light at the end of the tunnel is that we'll get to hit the links again when it's released as DLC this fall. Nintendo Switch Sports, like Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort before it, is best played as a party game. You want to experience its six motion-controlled games when you need to break them out for a gathering that needs a quick injection of goofy, active fun. But it's not going to go far beyond that. Its sparse mixture of old and new sports varies in quality, but Switch Sports largely sticks the landing on what made its predecessors memorable. Intuitive motion controls, the ability to effortlessly get a group of people up and moving, and some killer menu music that's liable to get stuck in your head all day. Just don't expect to spend a whole lot of time with it before the novelty wears off. If you're looking for more party games on Switch, make sure to check out our review of Mario Party Superstars, and for everything else, keep it here on IGN.